Hello pilgrims, fellow travellers and adventurers. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Two Blondes on a Camino. A big welcome to all of you new subscribers and we'd like to give a big shout out to those of you who've encouraged other people to subscribe to our channel. You know who you are. We really appreciate you. We think you're awesome. So thanks a lot. In today's episode, you'll pick up the trail with us as we head out from Aberdeen and we wend our way slowly but surely towards Villalba. Onwards from there, we go to a place called Bamond. And then finally, in day three of this leg, we end up in Friol. On the way, we have a joyful surprise and there's something mysterious in a churchyard. So without further ado, grab your backpack, slip your trail runners on and let's get going. Good morning. <laughs> well, we just had an amazing meeting with Albert and Deline. And, Deline. and, and it's like we haven't seen them for, oh, oh God, a over a week, weeks. two Maybe weeks. And, uh, yeah. Oh, it's just so good to see Pilgrim family that we, we've missed. We walked with them for quite a while and we will walk with them again today. But uh, we made a bit of a scene in the bar. <laughs> But it was lovely. Yeah, anyway, joyful reunion. Here we are on our way. It's only 21k today. Um, and we don't have to climb any huge mountains. So, or at least we're told that, you know, huge mountains around <laughs> here are... <laughs> oh, that's not a mountain. It's just a hill. <laughs> so we'll see. Anyway, Boing Camino. Oh, this is what I love about Galicia. The mist in the fields like this and the beautiful beautiful trees
magical place though. I love that.
Buen camino. Well, folks, the big question, will I get through this walk without blisters? Well, there are lots of ways of stopping blisters from happening. Probably the most important would be to wear a shoe a size larger than you would normally wear uh, and then learn how to uh, do up the laces in a heel lock. Now, that would require, of course, that you're using trail runners uh, because they have the extra uh, eye to, to put a heel lock on. Um, the other thing, uh, learning uh, which socks suit you. Uh, we use um, runner's socks, like from uh, long distance runners. We get them at running stores. They're basically a socket with padding in the right spots. Now, if you do get a blister, what do you do? Well, if it's still not broken, I highly re recommend that you drain them. So have a, knee or a needle, uh, sewing needle or a pin, and of course heat it so that you kill any germs that are on it and then pierce it carefully and drain the liquid out of it. Once you've done that, as long as the skin is not torn, use a regular bandage. If, however, you walked along, you've, you're limping now, it's sore, you take your shoe off and the skin is torn. Now the best thing that you can do is trim off the loose skin that you've got and use a compede. It's like a second skin. You can also get mole skin in Canada and the States and Britain, but the compede that is available in Europe is, is great for this. Put it on and leave it on. Don't take it off for the showers or anything. Put it on and leave it on. It's a good idea if you do have a broken blister, a torn skin blister, to use a polysporin or something like that to make sure that you don't get uh, an infection in it. Other than that, again, a pair of shoes, a size larger, tie a heel lock, it on the shoe when you're putting it on and this should protect your feet from blisters. Now this tip is about another piece of handy kit to take with you on the Camino and I'm really sorry because I should have mentioned this much earlier on in the series. I'm going to show you how to look buff. Yes folks, this is a buff and as you can see it has the Camino trail on this one. This is the Camino Francis buff though. Um, and all it is, is a tube of fabric. It's probably microfiber, although it feels a bit like cotton jersey. It's a very versatile piece of kit. And what I use it for more than anything is as a scarf. Um, because we tend to walk Caminos either in the spring or, or fall. That's autumn for you folks in the UK and Europe. Um, so by the end of the, the journey, the mornings are a little bit chilly or in the evenings as you're coming into your albergue. And, and this keeps your neck really lovely and warm 
And remember that if your lower back and your neck is warm, it really helps the rest of your body to keep warm too. Uh, this is really lightweight, uh, packs into nothing, but you can also wear it and use it in many different ways. I will produce a YouTube short video to show you all of the different ways you can use it, uh, but that's for another day. So yeah, consider packing a buff. It's really versatile, very lightweight, and will keep you warm on those very chilly mornings. <laughs>
We're bridging the gap, actually crossing the river. <laughs> to Santiago, it's a long way to go, it's a long way to Santiago, to the chains that we all know, so long Piccadilly, farewell Leicester Square, it's a long, long way to Santiago. Walk there. have run into on many of the Caminos that we've walked are uh, animals and I mean everything from uh, the local dogs uh, to uh, a bull <laughs> right on the path uh, horses 
everything, uh, cows, sheep. Um, so you're, you're going to run into a lot of animals. Be cautious with, around them. You never know how they feel. Don't challenge them or try and pat them or something like that. Simply walk on by and uh, you'll be safe. I think probably the ones that I'm most worried about are some of the local farm dogs who come after you with quite a challenging bark. And I think you just have to sort of stand your ground and keep walking. Uh, I haven't been bitten by one and I've never come, had one come up too close. Although Sarah had one roll in front of her and say, scratch my belly. But uh, generally speaking, we try and stay away from the animals. Now, if a horse sticks its nose over the fence at you, uh, don't be afraid to give it a little pat. Uh, maybe if you've got a piece of fruit, an apple, they love apples, they like carrots. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to give them something. Other than that, you know, um, be cautious of the animals that are there. Don't harass them and they won't harass you. One travel tip I have for you today is that as we're nearing the end of this epic El Camino del Norte journey, um, by this stage, if you like us at all, you might be feeling a little bit tired after all of those hundreds of kilometers. And say if you've been supporting the albergues as you go along, but perhaps you might not be getting a good night's sleep, particularly if you've been in some of the bigger dormitories, then why not consider giving yourselves a little bit of a treat? Um, maybe you can find a lovely place that's got smaller dormitories or even private rooms where you can just relax uh, for the evening and, and get a really good night's sleep. We found some really special places on the way. Um, you'll, you'll see one in this video, uh, but then also there's a really spectacular place in, in the last video uh, next week that you'll see uh, where it was a really beautiful place to stay, a bit more comfortable than the average albergue um, with a beautiful garden. Um, so yeah, just give yourselves a bit of a treat, pamper yourselves a little, you've earned it.
Good morning. Good morning. This is day 39. 39 days of walking. <laughs> up and down, and then down and up, and oh. up and down, and we're under, something like that. We're under 100 kilometers to go. Yeah. <laughs> today, <laughs> not today, tomorrow we will have done 800 kilometers. Wow. By the end of tomorrow, I think. Yeah, long way. We felt every step, haven't we, though? Yes. <laughs>
Same time. Walking with Celine from South Africa. Hey, how are you feeling today? <laughs> That's great. could be in Northern Ontario right now, except for that. decided to do was to stay on the northern route as far as we thought we could so uh, which we did so basically staying on the Del Norte uh, and taking the N634 
Now, we didn't realize at the time that you could go all the way to uh, Lava Cola, uh, which is the airport, really, uh, on the uh, 634. So we did turn off early, but it's the new route. It's starting to build up. There, uh, a warning. Uh, there isn't a lot there. I think there's one pension on the route uh, and a few pu pubs. But it keeps you out of that rush, the uh, Saria rush that is so prevalent these days. So consider taking the N634 all the way down to the airport. That's all for today, folks. Thank you all so much for watching, for also liking and sharing the videos and leaving your comments and queries. We really love this interaction that we get with you. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button below the video and also the bell so that you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. Join us next time as we head out from Friol on the final leg of our epic El Camino del Norte journey. Until then, take good care of yourselves and of each other and Buen Camino.